Okay, so today uh, I will discuss about the switch capacitor amplifier. The agenda means I will cover only few things uh, here. Uh, why switch capacitor is required? Then I will try to discuss uh, uh, the CMOS switches. Means it's uh, what is the design considerations for CMOS switches. And then uh, I'll give one example of the of uh, switch capacitor amplifier. Means in general, to achieve some gain, switch capacitor amplifier. Okay, so to begin with, uh, uh, so. Can you tell me the gain of this inverting amplifier? Excuse me. It's minus R2 by R1. Should be out my screen. Okay. What are the assumption uh, we considered? to get this uh, R2 by R1. Yeah, that means AV is almost infinity. Input resistance is very high. And what about output resistance? Zero. When you implement a amplifier in CMOS technology, all these assumption is valid or not you have to examine all your assumption is valid or not so uh, start with the first one what about av voltage gain not infinite obviously nowhere you will get infinite gain uh, even you implement it in other technologies but till say if you design an amplifier with a gain of 40 dB or 60 dB, it's not adequate. So this assumption is not valid. Second is our input resistance is very high. Okay, this is true. True. This is not adequate. And last thing is R out. Is it zero? It directly contradicts with your uh, requirement because if you want to increase your uh, open loop gain you have to increase the output impedance you got it is that yeah yeah even if you include a output stage you won't get uh, lower uh, output impedance as in your VJD uh, buffer and source follower in CMOS has a major disadvantage in that sense. If you add a source follower at the output stage, uh, what are the limitations? You, you will lose the output swing. You will add some distortion. Okay. So most of the uh, time we try to avoid the source, source follower at the output stage due to uh, amplifier power performance. Okay, so so if I try to write the output means gain expression for this circuit, it looks like uh, means in terms of input output I means output resistance and open loop gain, it will the model will be like that. Okay, let me draw the model. So uh, the gain ex expression 
will be like that. So now if you put the values here. Okay, so now if you uh, put the values of R out and A V according to your requirement, it, it will simplify to minus R two by R one. Okay, so uh, the main reason here is that you, you won't be able to implement a amplifier with lower output impedance in CMOS technology. So uh, that's why if you add a resistive load at the output, your open loop gain will degrade because your this R out is comparable with your load. If 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 this R say physically uh, if I say R out equals to 1 K and if you apply a R L equals to 1 K or even R2 equals to 1K, it will degrade your uh, open loop gain by a 6 d by 6 dB. Okay, so, so you cannot load your amplifier during the ampl amplification phase. So that is why you need to you, you need to replace means you need to replace this R1 and R2 by a capacitor. But uh, what is the problem? So if you if, if you if you replace your R1 and R2 by capacitor, C1 and C2, will it work as a uh, amplifier? No, uh, you replaced R1 and R2 by C1 and C2. Is it amplified? Yeah. No, even uh, you consider a frequency selective amplifier, it won't work properly because you won't have the you don't have the biasing uh, circuit. The only problem is you do, you have to set the bias point first, then it will work as amplifier. So it's not an amplifier. I mean, it won't work as a amplifier. You have to think about the biasing requirement. Okay, so. So, to provide the bias circuit, you you could apply a resistor parallel with C2 and this could uh, now your argument is right. So, it will work as a frequency selective amplifier. So, let us try to get the transfer function. So, it is transfer function it is like Now, 
this is the transfer function for this uh, means for this configuration assuming all those uh, open loop gain is high and all those things. But even here if you see this value rf into c2s component should be high enough means uh, it should be very very high compared to 1 so that you can appro approximate it as an amplifier. Okay, so so at this stage we can uh, make a comparison or uh, can observation on our uh, two basic uh, families of amplifiers or different technologies like if you implement a amplifier in BJT and if you implement it in CMOS. If you implement uh, means in C BJT you, you could achieve uh, input stage sorry you, you could achieve a low in output impedance but at the same time your input impedance is not so high ok and uh, but in CMOS technology you have input high input high enough input impedance but your output impedance is not adequate means not so low so this switch capacitor uh, amplifier if you want to implement you will get means in cmos technology you can implement it easily than in bjt because uh, your bjt amplifier continuously load Strings the current bias current, and that that will degrade your uh, that that will degrade your uh, switch capacitor performance. So uh, let me explain little bit on the switch uh, design. Then I will come back into the amplifier. Okay, so so uh, think about a simple MOS transistor operating as a switch. When you design a switch, you, you need to uh, check uh, the on resistance and off resistance of the switch. Okay, uh, that will determine the speed of your switch capacitor circuit. The simple RC time constant will determine your uh, speed of the switch uh, means charging or discharging time, and your off resistance also important to prevent the continuous leakage of the holding uh, capacitor like say if you have a so uh, when your uh, transistor this switch is on you want a very low on resistance so that your hold capacitor gets uh, reach that input voltage as quick as possible and when you off the switch you want a very high off resistance so that it does not leaks through this part. This is one consideration when you uh, design a switch and other things are the, uh, uh, the precision requirements I will come later. So, simple uh, for a simple NMOS switch or PMOS switch say uh, <coughs> normally if you uh, operate with a VDD supply means I put the clock as the switch controller so it is the maximum means when you on a NMOS you apply VDD and off you apply 0 but if you apply a VDD the main limitation is is its voltage swing you cannot get 
So, V D D minus V uh, means a threshold voltage you will lose here, you cannot apply. So, that is one limitation. The another limitation is your input voltage means your on resistance, the expression of your on R on is nothing but beta into V V minus V T H like that. No, not V D D V beta into V D D minus V in minus V T. Am I right? Always you, you consider that your V in is you can consider it as a source and source V G S minus V T H. So, V G S is nothing but V D D minus V in that is your V G S minus V T H. So, this V in has a direct effect on your R on. So, whenever you apply a changing V in at the input, your on resistance is going to change that could directly impact your circuit performance means your time constant is going to change according to your v in and obviously you want you, you don't want to uh, get any impact of that input voltage or switch resistance variations in your circuit so whenever you are going to get a precise amplifier to get a better linearity and all those performance means in complicated circuit you, you need to consider that fact also. So, that is why there is one option means uh, the I just include the name of that switch you can go uh, through the net and uh, you will get it you, you will get the circuit and principle of motion that is called bootstrap circuit. So, bootstrap switch means you, you just couple your input circuit uh, input voltage the input variation you just couple your input variation to the gate voltage in such a way that your V D on voltage is always V D D ok. So, you get rid of that problem of R, R on means on resistance variation. V D D No, that is whatever V D D minus V T H is your overdrive, overdrive, not output. Say, what is your V G S? Now V G S is nothing but V D D minus V in. In one. No, no, in uh, for a N more switch, you you just if you want to on the switch, or wh what should be your voltage get voltage? Yeah, oh, okay. I, I put the sign over here, and when you are going to operate the uh, transistor in a, as a switch, it is interchangeable does not matter whether the this arrow sign is because the physical implementation if you uh, recall or re, uh, if you go through the textbook after the class you will get it that it is symmetrical whichever terminal you can use as a source or drain it is not a problem. Yeah, but I am not showing the <laughs> bulk condition over here. Anyway, so yeah, yeah, obviously, and uh, no, uh, that uh, for NMOS, obviously, you do not have the option to connect uh, the bulk separately, but in PMOS, you can, but but forget about that. In, uh, whenever uh, when you operate the transistor as a switch, you do not need to care about drain and source, okay, but obviously, if you uh, go 
for a amplifier or other circuit design you need to take care means you, you can make any terminal as a drain or source but you have to decide which is source and which is drain but for a switch you don't need to care about that okay so now your vgs is vd minus vin for this okay now that's why this vin is coming into picture uh, to change your r on or on resistance now if you want to get rid of this uh, vin effect because it, it may change uh, it, if you add apply a sinusoid or, or anything uh, any time varying signal it will change your r on and it may affect your circuit performance that's why uh, there is uh, another option in the well, very well known uh, circuit it's bootstrap switch which uh, couples your input voltage to the gate voltage in such a way that your vgs is simply vdd okay you don't have any problem <coughs> okay even uh, another advantage of that is okay you, you, you uh, now you you get better overdrive voltage and more overdrive voltage you don't uh, need to subtract that vin but say say if you uh, we have a 1.8 voltage supply and your v in is 900 millivolt so vgs is only 900 millivolt instead of 1 1.8 volt so you will get lower on resistance and another option is there uh, called boosted circuit where you can just do even if you apply a 1.8 volt supply you can boost your gate voltage to more than 1.8 volt more than more than the supply volt that is called boosted circuit boosted switch okay so this this is uh, only the speed consideration means when you uh, consider the speed of a switch you need to consider about the on resistance operation and all those things now uh, um, I'll try to uh, say about the accuracy requirement. Since uh, what kind of uh, errors a switch can introduce to your circuit? Okay, so look at the transistor diagram. Means if you uh, see the cross, cross sectional view of a, a transistor, this is your source region. I'm considering a NMOS. Okay, unless uh, I mention it's not here. So you have N plus region in both source and drain. This is your gate terminal. Now when you try to own this transistor you have a positive vgs the first thing happens here is that a charge is going to accumulate here and the channel will form this region Switch is going to on at this end. 
your charge is going to accumulate uh, in the channel region and then your output voltage is going to follow the input voltage. up to this point and when you when you this uh, charge is uh, going to accumulate at this channel region charge is coming from both sides okay you don't have any problem because you don't uh, you, you don't bother about this um, the voltage at this phase because it's a source you will get the charge from the source you don't have any problem, but <coughs> but at the falling edge, see again we have you just down this lower this voltage, so you don't have any positive voltage over here, VGS, your channel will disappear, and this charge will distribute in both ways. Will in will go both way, so some of the charge will come here to the source and some of the charge will come to drain voltage. Now, so ideally, when this voltage is going to, I uh, mean, this switch is going to off, it, you should stop here. You should stop here. But this negative charge or this uh, electrons will come over here and it will change the charge of this capacitor. Because few more electrons for an NMOS switch, few more electrons is going to accumulate at this capacitor and it will change your whole phase, whole phase voltage. I am considering all these things going to. Uh, happen ideally you don't have any leakage on the capacitor you don't have uh, any off resistance infinite of this uh, this is your whole capacitor you have to apply it ph is means uh, no it's a capacitor you you, you apply it's not the CGS or CDS of this. It's it's not coming from the switch. It's another uh, different capacitor you apply according to your. It's a uh, I means this is a simple sample and hold circuit, switch capacitor circuit. You sample the voltage, hold it into the capacitor. Okay, but but accuracy of that holding capacitor. Say uh, this value, this capacitor value may be few femtofarad and few hundred of femtofarad, 100 femtofarad or 200 femtofarad according to your application. So, few, uh, uh, these on resistance and uh, means this channel charge can change, change your voltage uh, which is harmful for your application. If you say you, you are going to uh, implement a 10 bit ADC, pipeline ADC or whatever thing, 10 bit ADC and you are going to uh, implement the sample and hold circuit for this kind of thing. And your channel charge is going to change the voltage by say few millivolt, 10 millivolt or 20 millivolt. You won't get anything. Yes, 10 millivolt is your 10 LSV kind of thing in the application. So you cannot afford uh, that kind of charge injection. So. Uh, is it clear means why the charge injection is coming and, uh, and what is the effect. Now there is a lot of uh, remedy of this uh, thing, but you have to understand the uh, effect of it uh, means uh, the original uh, cause and uh, means how harmful is your charge injection. Otherwise you might ignore that okay, it is few electrons only coming from here. Okay, so say if you, uh, 
so your uh, amount of charge over will be nothing but the blue into L of the this transistor into VDD minus V out is nothing but V in minus ideally V out should be equal to V in at that instant the sampling instant. Now you have to since it is a negative charge so it will reduce the voltage. So that is QCH by I am considering that okay. I am considering the whole channel charge is coming to this side, the worst case condition. Okay. Okay, so this is the expression for your uh, output voltage resistor to input. So you can plot it. So this term you can uh, consider is a as a gain in this part. You can consider it as a gain error because ideally you want a one gain. V out equals to V in, but this term appears as a gain error. And this, this is you can consider as a constant offset. Next, the uh, remedy. How how you can uh, get rid of this? So one way you can uh, minimize the charge injection is that you apply another dummy transistor with the switch in such a way that when your switch is going to on, this transistor is off, clock and clock B. So both are NMOS transistor, you switch, uh, this is on, this is off and when this transistor is going to off. It will leave the channel charge to the holding capacitor, which is the Q1. And this transistor is going to on, so it will absorb the channel charge. At the same time, it will get delta Q2. And if you can make delta Q1 and Q2 equal, it's not possible to make equal, but you can minimize it. So the basic thumb rule is if you, you, you need to make M1 equals to twice M2. It will minimize your charge injection effect. Another thing is complementary switch transmission gate switch.
but CMOS will contribute false, NMOS will give you election. So, that will cancel each other. And the another option is different share operation. So, in differential uh, operation, your charge injection will appear as a common mode joint, so you do not have any problem. If you have identical switches, a uh, switch and capacitor, then it will be a, a common mode. This is clock. The same clock you, uh, you are going to apply for both switches. So, uh, next issue is your clock feed through. So, if you have CGS or whatever you call CGD, because this is your Transistor will operate in linear region. So, so that capacitor will couple your clock, which means variation in clock sequence, clock signal to your whole capacitor. This coupling can change uh, your output voltage significantly. Same way, you can uh, minimize. You can apply a dummy transistor over here. <coughs> That is your CGD or CGS, whatever you want to say. Depends on the uh, switch size. Few favorite femtofarad only, say 10 femtofarad or something like that. But all these things will matter because your trans, uh, holding capacitor is nothing but 100 femtofarad, 200 femtofarad, it's according to your requirements and your. If you need a 10 bit accuracy or more than that, your LSD is going to be less than universe. So, you need to be very careful about that. Okay. <coughs> and, uh, and the last thing is your KT by C noise. So, the thermal noise, uh, another thing is your. Uh, the transistor operating as a switch is going to contribute to the noise, output noise. That is the thermal noise and you can, uh, that, that will add with your hold, uh, holding capacitor noise. But, uh, but if you uh, calculate the total RMS noise at the contributed to the output, it will appear as a KT by C, root over KT by C. So, that is KTYC. And normally, this KTYC noise is not so harmful. It, it will be well below the range. Okay. So, the main 
thing you need to consider when you are going to design a switch is that your on resistance or on resistance requirement and the charge injection error. If you have a differential operation, then you do not need to bother about so much because you, you the this third option will come into picture. So, whatever may be uh, the charge injection error, it will cancel out. But if you try to design a single ended switch capacitor amplifier, yeah, it is going to be a really hard job. Okay, so that is all about the switch, uh, can say switch design or switch consideration. Now, I will try to give you a switch capacitor amplifier. It is uh, how we, we are going to determine the speed of the amplifier and all those things. And then So, this is a simple switch capacitor amplifier. The gain of the amplifier is defined by C1 and C2. Okay. So, let us consider uh, start with the operating principle, how it uh, looks like a I means how it operates. You have a clock. So, switch S1 and S2 are in phase and it is operated by the signal clock and S3 is in complementary phase. So, when your S1 and S2 is on and S3 is off, your circuit looks like So, your amplifier is in unity gain mode and the voltage at this node at the input is at virtual ground. So, the entire input voltage is going to store into C1. The voltage across C1 is V in. In next phase, your S2 and S1 is going to off and S3 is off, on. So, now what is the charge across uh, C1? So, charge, charge across C1, yeah, 
sorry. What is the potential at this voltage, at this node? Zero. What is the? No, no. This node. Zero. So the voltage across P1 is zero. Charge across it is also zero. Okay. So charge across P1 is zero. Voltage across P1 is zero. The entire charge is going to transfer to P1, P2. The sampling phase, the charge across C1 was V in into C1, charge. So this entire charge is going to shift to C2. So, Q C2 is also V in into C1 and V out is nothing but Q C2 by C2 that means V in C1 by C2. So, V out is V in into C1 by C2. It behaves like a amplifier, but not a continuous even amplifier. Yeah. No. You see, you just try to understand the potential of the amplifier means all these nodes in different phases. And you try to consider this. This node is always at virtual ground. So in sample phase, in sample phase, this was at ground. This is positive. Okay. And since at the amplification factor uh, phase, this is again in at virtual ground. And this charge is going to shift over here, and you will get same thing. So you, you you don't have any inversion, unlike the resistive feedback circuitry. Okay, because uh, in resistive feedback, you if you remember the uh, analogy that there is a continuous flow of current, and that direction of the current is going to determine the polarity. <coughs> so, uh, so this is the working principle, and uh, now, now if you try to consider uh, get the accuracy uh, limit, means whether it's uh, means I have just uh, all this approximated calculation to get the C C two C one by C two again. Now, if you apply the uh, KVL, uh, you will get. The equations. So you just try to uh, do it. <coughs> okay, so the equation looks like I'm just going to the final uh, write the final expression and get the equation.
So the same thing appears here. Your C2, C1, and the input range, input capacitor of that uh, of the amplifier is going to input some constant on the accuracy side. C1. So this this part is your gain error. You don't want this part. And another thing is, uh, so this is your accuracy portion, and if you uh, try to calculate the uh, settling speed or uh, time constant of the amplifier, it will uh, it will be a function of your GM of the uh, input stage, your uh, load capacitor, and your feedback capacitor and input capacitor, but the main dependency comes from the GM and the input capacitor. Okay, so I'm not going to uh, calculate all those things because we don't have much time. I have to finish by 10 minutes. So this is uh, this is uh, this is a generic thing. You can vary. You, you can select your value of C1 and C2 uh, to get your gain. But that's uh, so you. The matching factor or, or, or that ratio should be very accurate to get the gain. The different uh, topology people use is that you, you can use multiple identical capacitor to sample the input capacitor input voltage and apply the one of them into the feedback factor. So, for one example, if you want to get a Precision gain two. So S1 and S2 operates in complementary phase. So when S1 is going to, when S1 is on and S2 is off, your circuit So it's going to sample the input voltage by both the capacitor. When this one is one on, <coughs> when S two is on, circuit is 
circuit looks like this. One of the capacitor is going to the feedback path and another is going to connect to the its ground. <coughs> so, in the same way you can assign any number of capacitor to get any gain. There is lot of way to get the uh, gain in switch capacitor application. You can change the uh, charging cycle also. You can, you can go through the literature and get it. But the, these are the basic thing need to consider. Okay, so that's all from from my side. So do you have any question or any clarification? Thank you for your attention.